the corresponding spot for B flat major in Gavotte for Mignon is measure 36 and 37. In these two measures, you will use your first finger as an anchor. It must remain on the E string while you play these two measures. You need to make sure that there's clearance so that you can hear the A string as you play with that first finger down. I'll play it for you slowly. Again, and I want you to listen for ringtone and pitch and clarity. Very clear play. The next corresponding spot is the second half of 37 into 38 and into 39. So you'll start with your low two on the D string and you'll go place your first finger on B flat, which is on the A string. And you want to make these sound so beautiful because they're a perfect fourth between each other. That's the interval between them. How many uh, steps? Two and a half steps? No. no sorry. Three and a half steps. Another thing you can do to prepare yourself for, from, for a gavotte from mignon is to play perpetual motion in the key of B flat major. You would start on the A string with your low one, remembering that your thumb does not come back with your finger, just your finger jets backwards towards the end of the finger board. Oh no. Perpetual motion B flat. do to prepare for Gavotte for Mignon is to learn the B flat major scale two octaves starting on the G string with a low two B flat. Remembering that our ring tones are still D, G, and A. We have no E ringing because it's an E flat. So thinking about where your whole steps and half steps are is very important. I'm going to turn so that you can see my left hand as I play. Use the B flat major scale to us. <laughs> pages of the book, but we're going to do it again, and we're going to make sure that we don't shift our hand back to get B flat, but we shift our finger back. Notice how my finger is actually extending and laying down because I'm not moving my hand. If I moved my whole hand, it would stay in its same shape, but because I want it to be, to my hand to stay in this position. You could practice it with all four fingers down and releasing that finger backwards. That would help you stay in tune. And then you can do it with B, B flat, B flat. You can practice that. So hopefully you've done that practicing and now 
you're going to play these notes. B, D, C sharp, fourth finger, and then A. Okay, we're going to do it again. B, D, C sharp, four, open A. Now you're going to play it with B flat instead. One, three, two, four, A. Once you get that established, then you can add your slurs. You have two note slur and then two separate bows. So B and D are together. And then B flat and D are together. The tricky part is that it's actually a start. So I'm going to do it the way it's written in the piece. I'm going to push first. No hand movement, just the finger. All right. We're learning so much with B flats and B naturals. Here's another one. So in measures 24 and 25, we're going to play a pattern. This is part of 24, but we're just going to start with the pattern itself. I say, I like ice cream. We're going to say that three times with our notes. I like ice cream. I like ice cream. I like ice cream. All right, and we're going to say that with these notes. A, B flat, G, B flat. Now the B flat becomes an anchor on the A string. So I'll show you so you can see it's going to be A, B flat, G, B flat. Open, one, three on D, one. And then I'm going to play it for you. And remember, how many times? Three. That was three times, so it's I love. to lots of ice cream, lots of ice cream, lots of ice cream. And that's A and B natural. So we've now changed the first finger to a regular one. And now we're going to go lots of ice cream, lots of ice cream, lots of ice cream. And that's the pattern. I'll do it one more time. Lots of together. Here's the first one. I like ice cream or I love ice cream. And I like ice cream or lots of ice cream. So again, it's going to be keeping that first finger down on the B flat. essential so that you can get the pattern in your muscles and in your head. We're going to practice measures 37, 38, and 39. I'm going to break it down for you and I want you to make sure that you are listening really carefully for intonation, making everything sound like it fits together. So these are the notes we're going to play. F natural on the D string, second finger, and B flat on the A string. Then G and C, then A and D. Do that much first. All right, so now how do they sound? together to see they become a perfect fourth 
That's pretty cool. The sound is very pure. So now I'm going to put G and C together. And there I have the perfect fourth. That took a while, didn't it? All right, and I listen for those notes. And then I play the A and D. Of course, we have an open string and a D that rings. And I make sure those happen a whole bunch of times. Then I'm going to practice the bowing. The bowing is up and then slur two. And then up on G, slur two. Up on A, slur two. And that's how we put it together. And you can practice that with the additional speed as you go and get really good. So I'm going to play one more spot, which is the last measure I mentioned. It's B flat. Just a simple turnaround. Low one. And guess what? You're doing it for pitch. You're also doing it for that first slur. And noticing that I started on an up bow. Pushing. And that's that measure. Have fun. We're going to deal with the next pattern that comes up. We're going to use the same words. I like ice cream, I like ice cream, I like ice cream, and lots of ice cream, lots of ice cream, lots of ice cream. But this time the notes are different. So we're going to start with our B flat, and we're going to go B flat, C, A, C. B flat, C, A, C. You can have two fingers down. B flat, C, A, C. As you can see, we need to retain or keep the first finger down. So keeping the first finger down, B flat, C, A, C, or one, two, open two. That's the first pattern. It sounds like this. That's the three times that it comes. And then the next part of the pattern is just um, the B flat and C coming down in our pattern of lots of ice cream. Lots of ice cream, lots of ice cream. Once more. Lots of ice cream, lots of ice cream, lots of ice cream. Then you can put it together. you do it slowly as many times as you need and then gradually speed it up so that your fingers know and you know everything and you know the pattern. So these are the last two exercises that are appearing on your second page of Gavotte for Mignon. The first one is um, 16th notes, faster notes. We're going to get them for pitch, make sure they're slow enough for pitch and making sure we're in tune. And then we're going to also apply the fourth finger to part of it and on the A string. So here's the first part where you're going to apply the pinky. You start on A. All of this is on the A string. Notice that one and two are touching. B and C are half step apart. And then you have a space and a space. And, of course, the third finger and the fourth finger ring. I'll do that again. Here it is on the A string. That's the first part. The second part of that is just going from C natural over to F sharp, open E, and ending on D. The second part is starting on C natural, F 
sharp E and D. So when they come together, we're going to see this. ways of doing it, which is really great because they break it down so you can find your pizzicato notes properly. So the first one has two up bows to start. We start on D, which is third finger on the A string. We go up and then we go up to, we rock to E and go up again. Then you're going to go to the A string. You're going to pizzicato D, B, and D. Then you're going to do open E, set your first finger F sharp, set your two for G natural. I'll do it again. Two ups. All right. Now you have a choice. Um, when you do the up ups, you can use a pinky. I did before you can use the open E. Um, I think it's nice to use the pinky because it keeps you on the same string when you start to pizzicato. All right, the second way they show you how to practice it is the same opening. So I'm going to use fourth finger this time for the E. Then you pizzicato um, the notes. So here's what happens you do two ups, then you pizzicato. E. When you get your F sharp ready, you're going to put your finger on the A string and strum diagonally away from you or across the fingerboard. Look at my right hand. And then you're going to set, you're going to hop your first finger to the A string. Your second finger is going to be right next door. Like it's a half step, but it's on the E string. So one is on A, two is on E. And then you do the same thing. You get your first finger to um, be on the A string, ready to strum across. So here's what it sounds like together. Set, set. All right. So those are the uh, exercises at the bottom of the second page of Gavat from Mignon. From Gavatra Mignon, you learn how to begin a trill. A trill is when we move our fingers pretty fast, um, two fingers, and we oscillate or move between the two notes very fast. But when we start learning trills, we start slowly because we want the motion between the fingers, one stays down, one lifts, to be even. We want it to sound in time or very metronomic. So in this one, this is in measure five, it repeats a, a lot of times during the song. You take F sharp on the E string, and then you're going to use a low two or a G natural to play this spot. And that starts your skills for a trill. So when you start, you're going to play um, a rhythm that goes one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. It's going to play this way. One, two, one, two, one. One, two, one, two, one. That's how your finger moves. You want to move with, with um, rhythm. So it will look like this. One, two, one, two, one. One, two, one, two, one. One, two, one, two, one. Like that. Now we're going to do it with the bow. It's under a slur. So watch. And we stop that sound at the end, stop the string. I'm going to go up now. One, two, one, two, one. Right, F sharp, G. Mm -hmm. And I like it because 
some stopping sound at the end of each bow. That was great. So now I'm going to take the last, I'm going to add a note, I should say. So I'm going to do at one, two, one, two, one, P. Here's how it looks. One, two, one, two, one, P. Here it sounds. Both the last part of the slur and the up bow, E, are staccato, so they are short. Sure that you're really doing one, two, one, two, one. Okay?